Well, we're live, and we're talking about movies. Mo the movies of 2017. Big, big shocker, we're talking about movies on this channel. We're going to take it in a whole new direction this year. We're going we're gonna to move away from what we've been doing and start moving in the direction of cinema in a whole new thing. It's going to be huge. I'm sorry, I, I cut you off. What were you saying? Uh, I think from now on we're going to review Facebook pages. Starting with that uh, with that flat earther <laughs> one that you posted too. Yes, I recorded a video about it. Oh, did you? Yes. Link here. It, it's in the eye corner. It's this side. Uh, we went it, it's over your this. channel. It's your channel. I'll let you. I'll let you handle it. So last year this was incredibly disorganized. So this year we're gonna organize it a little more. We're gonna talk about every movie I saw. From worst to best. Speaking of being organized, we have literally not talked about what movies we're going to review before we're going to review them. So, uh, it's going to be good. It, Paul's probably only seen like three or four of these. Yep, and I, I, we, I, I think I mentioned to him, the only movies I've seen in theaters this year are ones that he's been there with me for. So... You said you saw Guardians 2. Yeah, th didn't we see Guardians 2? No. I, I didn't even know if Guardians 2 came out in 2017. That's how lost I am. Um, so, uh, he's, he's gonna try to explain the, uh... He's try, gonna try to explain the plots to me, Red Letter Media style, and we're gonna, we're gonna have a grand old time. Um, Although, how long is this list? 44 movies. Alright. Hey, I saw 409 movies in 2017. Which is above average for me. It's because I took a semester off of school because I was just I was just working, so I didn't have anything to do in my spare time. So I'm like, fuck it, and I watched a movie basically every day, sometimes two. Plus, there was that month where we watched all the Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the Thirteenth, and Halloween movies. That was a fucking mess. And I'm gonna say straight up, excluding movies I saw Rift. Yeah, because I saw I saw a live riff of one movie with uh, like Trace Bouley and Frank Conniff, which was cool. I got to meet them. That was fun. Uh, cool. They live riffed a, the worst movie I saw all year, year, which was called Walk the Darkened Streets. Mm -hmm. um, then Carnival Magic was on the new season of MST3K, and I watched the riff tracks of Guy from Harlem. Those were the three worst movies I saw this year. Not counting the ones that were riffed, the worst movie I saw this year was the Rob Zombie Halloween movie. I'm glad that we could share that <laughs> moment together. Um, yeah, that was that was its own that was its own ring of hell, man. That was a sentence that I said that was really bad. Anyway, All right, um, let's jump so right I'm, in. Roll the intro. Uh, there's no intro. <laughs> this might be more than one video. Just heads up. Um, I'm gonna go over these fr in in order of how much I liked them. I have an accompanying rating out of ten, so you can know what my thoughts. objective thoughts are. But subjectively, these are my favorite, or at least favorite to my favorite. So uh, you've got a subconscious rating and a conscious rating. Yes. Although, right. before we begin, I want to talk about two movies that I think were technically 2016, because they were up for 2016 Oscars, but they didn't actually come out till 2017. How, how, Which, how, how, does, how does that work? They'll do, like, a limited release starting December 20th, full release in January, because they don't want to compete with, like, Star Wars or whatever other uh, blockbusters out in December. That's fair. No, that's actually pretty fair. Plus it puts them in theaters closer to Oscar season. Right, so people so, are more likely to remember. Yeah, there's more buzz about it. Plus, you know, if it gets nominated for an Oscar, then people are going to go see it while it's still in theaters. Uh, the two movies right. I saw, I saw them on the same day. Uh, the first one was Silence, which was up for Best Cinematography, which it deserved because the cinematography was great. But man, it deserved so many more nominations. So, what was Silence about? Um, it's it's about these two missionaries uh -huh. in, like, the 1400s who okay. go to Japan 
to try to find this missionary who has supposedly renounced his faith and is just living in Japan, but they haven't heard from him, so they don't know what's going on, so they go to find him. And uh, the guy they're looking for is Liam Neeson. And my God, Liam Neeson. <laughs> Holy crap. Liam Neeson deserved Best Supporting Actor for this. Not just a nomination, he deserved the award. He is so good in that role. Did he like, Did he not get it? He didn't even get a nomination. Holy crap. All right. it, was, it was up for one Oscar. It deserved so many more. Um, like, the closest thing I compare, can compare it to is Marlon Brando in um, Apocalypse Now. Because they just spend the whole movie looking for this dude. And mm-hmm. they finally meet him. And both Liam Neeson and Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando more so. But they and both they just... they finally meet Luke. And then uh, Ray holds out the lightsaber. They, they and just then they have... just kind of hold on that scene for like 20 seconds. And don't do anything until the next two years. They... <laughs> Liam Neeson and Marlon Brando both have this weight to them. That like the role would just feel empty without... It's like you finally meet this person, and there's just so much gravity to the performance. It's great. Uh, I highly recommend Silence. The other movie I saw was Lion, which was up for Best Picture, and didn't deserve it, because it was boring as hell. Damn. (laughs) Who who made that? Uh, Someone from Australia? (laughs) I don't know who made that. A, it sa- Lion sounds like a movie A24 would make. It might have been an A24 film. Really? Maybe. They've, they've been kind of, from what I hear, they've been kind of hit and miss this year. Yeah, I saw some A24 films. We'll talk about them. But the first movie we're going to talk about is the worst movie I saw all year. Number 44, Cars 3, which I would give a 3 out of 10. Eh... So this... so what was so I know that this was like supposed to be a, the last one. Did they deliver on the on the gritty? You know, as far as Pixar could have delivered, did they deliver on the gritty realism of the of the trailer <laughs> of Lightning McQueen dying? No, <laughs> Jesus All right. Christ! Like Pixar has put out some bad films in the last few years, uh-huh. like Cars Two and The Little Dinosaur, and even like. Brave and Finding Dory were pretty mediocre. Okay. But this is the only one I would call embarrassing. This movie is embarrassing. So, uh... Like, that last shred of dignity Pixar was holding on to, just gone. So so what happens in in Pixar's Cars 3? In Pixar's Cars 3, uh, these new cars show up that are more advanced than Lightning McQueen. Wait, didn't they already have that in Cars 2? A little bit in Cars 3? Or in Cars 1? No. Okay. Like, Technolot, like, they're just faster than Lightning McQueen. They're the new models. Plus, at this point, Lightning McQueen's, like, really old. It's getting to the end of his career. Um, Okay. And so these guys are beating him, and his company gets bought out, and they tell him... The, the new owners, the new owners like Nathan Fillion, who... The, the, okay, there were two good things in this movie. The voice acting and the animation, okay. because it's Pixar. Pixar knows how to cast a film, and they know how to animate. But other than that, everything was terrible. Um, right. But his new company tells him, Oh, you've got to win this next race, or you have to retire. Okay. And so he sounds pretty stock standard at this. Like, you, I feel like you haven't gotten to the part of the story that makes it unique. He's like, like what? What is the special part of the story? He here? starts training with this girl, and they've got all this like super technology in their facility. Uh, but he's like, oh, you know what I need is to like go out and train. In the real world, like drive and fe- feel the sand in my tires. So it's Rocky Four. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Man. <laughs> it's was Rocky like, that? Four. <laughs> <laughs> so, so does he? Does he wind up fighting the 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 Russian Soviet cars? <sighs> no. Damn. Like everything you expect to happen, yeah. happens. It's and they get like 
Because his trainer is like, oh, you think I wanted to be a trainer? No, I, I wanted to be a racer. And so at that moment, you know, oh, she's going to run. She's going to run the yeah, race. That, she's going to win. That's exactly so, what just popped into my head. Was like, So dude. Lightning McQueen drives the first lap. And then he tells her, no, wait, you replace me. You, it doesn't matter who the car is as long as they still have the same number. So they just real quick paint a uh, 95 on her and uh, send her out on the race. Uh, meanwhile, <laughs> while, while they're doing that, they've ran like five laps around the track. And she's like desperately she, behind. So she wins. Because uh, of course she was going to win. I'm pretty sure that that shit doesn't fly. But then it's like, oh, the winner is this trainer girl and Lightning McQueen because he started the race. Oh, and now he gets to retire on his own terms. Oh, yay, yay. And then, and then the yellow car. Uh, this is the dumbest thing. The yellow car gets to become the Dynaco car, which is what, you know, Lightning McQueen wanted in the first movie. Okay. She gets to become the Dynaco car. And like almost all of the merchandise for this movie. She is the Dynaco car. And I'm like, you guys care so little about this movie, you have spoilers in your merchandise. Holy crap. Alright. So, this, uh... Ahead. Well, I actually just lost my train of thought. This movie brings up so many more questions about the Cars universe than the other films. Because mm -hmm. it's already weird. But now, like... Because Lightning McQueen meets some older race cars who drove with Doc Hudson back in the day. And... Uh, one okay. of them is like, oh, they, one of them played by character actress Margot Martindale, is like, oh, they didn't want me to race because I was a woman, which just kind of makes you go, how can cars have genders? How do cars have genders? And then um, she turns to the car next to her and she's like, ah, oh, they didn't want us to race, did they? Which seemed to be implying, because the car next to her was played by a black dude, and it seemed to be implying that there was car racism, which is impossible! Because Lightning Between changes colors three times in this movie. He has a gray paint job, a blue paint job, and a red paint job. You can't have car racism. I'm so <laughs> lost right now. And then... Like, like sir, I, I don't understand. I, I've seen the movie and I don't understand. It, how can something so half-assed be so confounding? I don't understand. Like, you make Rocky 4 to the point that, like, you don't make it unique or anything except for the part that they're cars. But, you've already stolen, like, and then, and then you go in and you make something like the worst plot decisions that you could possibly make. Like, you just want that feel-good ending without actually trying for it. Yeah. So it's just like... You contrive everything was... in the story to make that ending happen. You don't care about how you get to the end. You just need to get from point A to point B so you can make a buck and sell the merchandising. Yeah, that was my biggest problem with the film. They also make some reference to running moonshine. How, how do, do cars, cars get, get drunk? drunk? Jinx. Oh. You owe me a Coke. But you can still talk. I'll let you. No, I don't want to talk unless it's at the same time as you. <laughs> We can be the okay, twins yeah. from The Shining. Uh, yeah, so Cars 3. Sounds Cars like 3. it sucks. Worst movie I saw all year. Probably not the worst movie of the year. So, wait. I, I mean, the, the Cars do have mouths, apparently. Yes. Cause, and then, because, like, didn't he win one of the races in one of the movies by, like, sticking out his tongue? Yes. Which, how does that work? <laughs> yeah, it's not like there haven't already been plenty of questions about this universe. I, I, think the, so I think the answer is just shut up and don't think about it. But they keep pushing that limit. It's like... <laughs> they have I, a Pope car. That was in two, <laughs> not three. How they have a Pope work? car. So like, there's Cartholicism. Carth Alright, and with that, we're going to move on to the next we're gonna one. We're going to move on. That was, that was the best joke that we're going to be able to make it this entire review. Let's move Pope, on. Number four, the 43rd... 43rd President of the United <laughs> States, Donald Trump. Don't look that isn't, up. Isn't he 44th? That's why I said don't look it up, because I don't know. 
A ghost story, which I would Ooh. give three and a half stars. Wait, a ghost story? A ghost story. They're getting really half-assed with these horror movie titles now. <sighs> it's not like, even a horror movie. It's like, like an art film. It's... Okay. This guy dies, and then his fiance, who said something about, like, oh, when she was a kid, she would always leave a note in the walls of the house she lived in when she left. Right. So he dies, and she moves out of the house, but she leaves a note there, and he spends all of eternity trying to get that note out of the wall. And that's the whole movie. How long is the movie? <laughs> An hour and a half. Okay, so it's this not movie all has, This movie has no business being an hour and a half. If it were like a 20-minute short film, I probably really would have liked it. I'd be like, oh, this is exploring some cool ideas. It's got kind of a nice style to it. But it's so fucking boring. It's an hour and a half. There's a ten-minute scene where a girl just eats pie. That's the whole scene. She eats a whole pie. And that's the scene. Pardon me, what, but what? The, yeah. The fuck? Yeah. Um, like, I'm not gonna lie, I like pie as much as the next guy, but I'm not gonna sit and watch somebody else, like, unless this is some sort of fetishism that they just really wanted to put into the film, I'm not gonna sit and watch somebody else eat pie for ten minutes. I mean, what kind of, what kind of pie was it? I think it was cherry. Yeah, well, fuck, fuck cherry. Fuck cherry pie. I like cherry. That's a good song, it's not my but... favorite. She's my cherry pie. Uh, and that's <laughs> cut. Yep, copyright. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> I know all the words to it, though. I have the album. Do you want this video to get demonetized? <laughs> yes. Trick answer. It's going to get demonetized anyway. Because fuck, fuck creators. Yep. <laughs> they don't matter. This is totally unrelated, but of all the Halloween Nightmare on Elm Street Friday the 13th videos... Only one of them is demonetized. Friday the 13th, part 3D. I don't know why that one's demonetized and the others aren't. That was, uh... It's just, that's just how arbitrary the system is. We didn't even use footage in that one, did we? No, the one where I used footage and had a montage of the best kills? Yeah. That's fine for monetization. The fuck? Anyways... How much you want to bet there's just one guy out there who insists that that's a good movie? It's like, <laughs> screw you guys. Those 3D <laughs> effects were well-deserved. We want to use them. Oh, shoot. What's her name? Susan something or other? Black? Who owns the CEO of YouTube. She's like a huge oh, Friday yeah. the 13th Part 3 fan. We're so off topic. Ghost Story. Really boring. Really boring. Really slow pace. And there's some good ideas in there. I get what they're getting at. Mm -hmm. It has no business being an hour and a half. And it's got this weird aspect ratio. Because if you want to make an artsy film, you can't do it in 16 by 9. You gotta do a 3 by 4 aspect ratio. No, I was gonna say, you have to shoot it on a cell phone. <laughs> but you have to shoot it vertical on a cell phone. <laughs> so the widescreen release is like as small as you can get it. And it's, I think it's three by four. It might be one by one, honestly. But it has, like, these rounded <laughs> it's edges. It's literally a postage stamp at that point. <laughs> it has these rounded edges that make it look like old Homestar Runner cartoon. <laughs> it has the aspect ratio of a Homestar Runner cartoon. That's how you know you've made it in the film industry. <laughs> Artsy. There was no reason for it to be three by four. I think I would have gotten it more, because, like... It's showing him this journey, him in this journey through time, and eventually it takes so long that time repeats itself. And so I, I would hate that. I hate that trope. That's such, like that ha that keeps on popping up in like time travel movies and stuff. And it's like such an uncreative way to like, oh, it just repeats itself. It's like, fuck what? Like, I don't know, man. It's but he doesn't even go back to the beginning of time. He goes back to the first time people lived where his house was. Because he's stuck in his house for all of eternity. How does that work? It's so, the, it's so the movie. he's a time-traveling ghost story. More or less. 
Uh, uh, is that an anime what? calendar over there? No. Okay. No, it isn't. It just it looked like it from my from my position. Um. Uh, We're so off topic. Casey Affleck is the main character. I have no clue why they got A-lister Casey Affleck, who just won Best Actor, to wear a sheet over his head the whole movie. Because that's... The fuck? The ghost in this movie, it's like the Charlie Brown ghost that are just wearing sheets with eye holes. It's art. It's straight up art, y'all. That's, that's, <laughs> that's not distracting from the plot. You know, I was, I was thinking he was just like... You know, he, he looked like a, a, a Sixth Sense kind of ghost. He, like, if, you, if you're looking at him, he looks like a regular dude. But no, apparently, he's just got a fucking sheet over his head. <laughs> and that's how you tell he's a ghost. It's Bravo. A-plus storytelling. You deserve the Best Picture Award. Wait, what was this nominated for again? Nothing. Okay. Oh. Go ahead. Fuck that movie. It's the non-porno version of Spooky Ghost Blowjob. Job. <laughs> Link in the description. <laughs> I'm not linking to that. That's a real porno. It's a chick in the ghost sheet, and she has, like, eye holes, a mouth hole, and her tits cut out. And she gives a dude a blowjob, and then she's like, Remember, don't jack off on Halloween. <laughs> Which I've I, never I, seen it all the way through. I found... I found, like, a picture of it on a porn site, and one of my friends actually looked it up. I, I, I would believe that that would be, uh, oh, I can't say their name on here. <laughs> it was Harrison. Was it Harrison? It was Harrison. Uh, anyway. Yeah, that's on. right. Our buddy, uh, Ford Harrison, of the, of the Harrison Ford Company. He is from the Ford Galaxy. What is, what is that a reference to? Spaceballs, but in Spaceballs, it was a reference to the car, the Ford Galaxy. So that's like five layers deep at this point. <laughs> Just like the number of layers of irony I'm on. Anyways, number 42, All Eyes on Me. Give it a four out of ten. Very subpar Tupac biopic. Um, which is disappointing, because I think Tupac is an interesting person. And honestly, there's a lot of positives to this movie. Uh, the main actor is really good. The directing and like cinematography is pretty good. But man, this script needed like two, three more drafts. The pacing is really awkward. A lot of the dialogue is really cheesy. Um, there's this framing device where like these people come in and are filming him while he's in jail, which. I would have just rather watched that movie that they were making. The documentary they were making. But they use that as a framing device. But then they drop that halfway through. Because halfway through the movie, he gets out of jail. So it's like, why even have it there in the first place? Yeah. It's yeah. sort of like, uh... It's sort of like how in Aladdin, they start out the movie by having the, the story being narrated by that, that shopkeeper guy. And then they they finish the Aladdin one, and then they never go back to him. Like he he was. T I hate it whenever movies do that. Like they're setting up like it's a story within a story, and then they just don't. It's like they forgot about it. So you probably forgot about it too, just and like this movie. And not a lot to say about All Eyes on Me, although I will say, because uh, the the main guy is, who's playing Tupac. Actually does kind of look like Tupac. The guy they have playing Biggie does not look like Biggie at all. And the guy they have playing Snoop Dogg does not look like Snoop Dogg at all. He sounds like Snoop Dogg. Like he was facing away from the camera and just singing. And I'm like, wow, that sounds like just like Snoop Dogg. He has a perfect Snoop Dogg voice. Mm -hmm. But once he turns and faces the camera, it's like, oh, he doesn't look anything like Snoop Dogg. <laughs> nice. Moving on. Life. Which I would give four and a half stars. Uh, uh, life? Life. What was it about? Do uh, not give me that answer. They were... It's these astronauts on the International Space Station. Oh, is it they, the one where, like, the they, they always showed the, the trailer where the guy gets his, his hand sucked yeah. into the... 
I thought that was gonna suck balls, honestly. When I saw the trailer for that <laughs> I saw, movie, I saw the trailer and I'm like, this is either gonna be really good or a trash can fire. Cause like, which I say a lot. No, that that's honestly what it what it was gonna be. Cause like, to me, it's a that was one of the dumbest trailers I've seen in a long time. He's like, oh man, it's cool. We found outer space life, and then it's like. Somehow it grabs his finger and like sucks in his entire arm, and I I, I lost interest in that movie. But apparently um, it, it was pretty good. Four out of five. No, four point five out of ten. Oh, this me. You know, forty five is is not passing. <laughs> it's not, not even a majority. Not even a D. Uh, but, but you know. You know, it's okay. Um. So the only the only character in this movie I cared about was Ryan Reynolds, and he's the first one that dies. So at about that point, I stopped caring about the movie. So um, was it a, uh, what happens in the movie? Uh, so this alien life form they've discovered keeps growing and growing and growing. And it starts attacking them, and they find out it's just going to attack, like, all life that it comes in contact with. And so they're eventually like, we have to keep this thing from getting back to Earth. Which, of course, then leads to the most obvious twist ending. Super Twilight Zone ending, where, like, they have, like, there's, like, two people left, and one of them's like, all right, it's Jake Gyllenhaal. He's a good actor, but he they give him nothing to do in this movie. Jake yeah. Gyllenhaal's all, all right. like, all right, I'll lure him into this escape pod, and you take the other escape pod and go back to Earth. Okay. And then it shows them shooting off, and like they, they bump into each other, and one of them goes flying off into space, and the other goes to Earth. And then it's like, oh no, but the wrong one went to Earth. Smash cut to the end credits. Playing Spirit in the Sky. <laughs> Most tonal whiplash ever. <laughs> it's just like, Holy oh, God. this alien that's going to destroy all life has landed on Earth. When I die and they lay me to rest. Gonna go to the place that's the best. Alright, this is copyright. So, damn, that actually sounds pretty bad. It was okay. I mean, subpar, but um it a lot of people compared it to the movie Sunshine, which I can kind of see. Um I didn't like Sunshine that much. It felt like things kept popping up just to inconvenience the characters. But it, that stuff at least felt random. In life, it feels like they keep making the exact wrong decision <laughs> to keep the movie going. It sounds like, from from what you've explained, it sounds like just a generic alien. Like, is the alien unique looking? Or is it just a Petri dish like it looks like? <sighs> well, in the... it starts out as kind of a blob thing, and eventually it has, like, this ridiculous looking skull face. So it sounds pretty generic. Eh, kind of. I mean, it's... I mean that, it sounds like I could have, I could have guessed the plot. Like, <laughs> yeah... Because it's a lot like an alien movie. Yeah, that that's it. It sounds like oh, it's gonna infect everybody if we if we don't uh, keep it from getting to Earth, and then it's like, um, I don't. It, it reminds it, me a lot of the thing or Alien or but the way blob. worse. Um, um, or Evolution. Have you seen that? I have not. That's a good comedy. All right, it's an okay comedy. It's it's um, kind of boring comedy. It's it's a bad. Don't, don't watch it. <laughs> it was written by Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick, who wrote Zombieland and Deadpool. Huh. And the alien keeps like jumping at people, only for them to close the door and have it hilariously slam into the door like Wiley e. Coyote, which makes me wonder if maybe like the All first right. draft of this script was a comedy. It was supposed to be like a parody of Alien. Right. And then some movie executive didn't get it. 
And they're like, we're going to make a scary horror movie from this script. And Rhett and Paul are just like, okay. But it's a comedy. <laughs> Whatever. No, the kids want to get into <laughs> want to get into sci-fi horror these days. That's that's what's important. That's Whatever. What We're busy writing Deadpool two, only for Disney to come along and neuter it in the editing room. Wait, what? Disney bought Fox, and they're probably gonna neuter Deadpool two. I'm yeah. really worried. Disney, please don't neuter Deadpool two. I don't think they're gonna let that. I mean, they might let it happen. I don't know. It just—it seems like something that they would do, because um, we've heard the same story with the Force Awakens before, and um, there were a bunch of movies that they they've bought the rights to, and then it was like, oh, well, that's not fitting in the Disney brand. Yeah. So they, it's it's not like well, they haven't done it before. Yeah, the Marvel movies have gotten. It's like, I've gone back to Iron Man, and I'm like, whoa, I don't remember this being this violent. Because <laughs> it's so much more violent than the other Marvel movies. Well, yeah, because you can actually see the action. Pretty much. I mean, Fair. Moving on. Free Fire, which I would give a 5 out of 10. This oh, was an A24 better. movie. We're getting better. Um, It's... I was watching the trailer, and I'm like... This seems maybe like it could be good, uh-huh. but also it kind of just seems like one shootout scene, and that's what it ended up being. It's the whole movie is a shootout scene. So, like, take a take a shootout scene from say, you know, like a like a John Woo movie. Okay. Take a shootout scene and just make that scene the whole movie. So a John Woo movie. I'm sorry, that was an obvious joke, and I, I apologize. But see, a John Woo movie, it would be a constantly moving shootout scene. Right. This movie is one scene. There's, like, ten characters. It's a shootout between, like, ten characters. And that's the whole movie. Which so, is kind of lame. Um, so, I don't know. It, like, the pacing is way slowed down from what you would want out of a scene like this. Right. Um, it kind of starts for... It, it, I think... Because <laughs> I do written reviews over on uh, my website, mattloveshollywood.weebly.com. Boop. Um, or if, if you just want direct links, you can check out my business Twitter, at mattkenny95, which exists, so if potential employers come looking for me... They don't find at Matt's underscore username where I just shit post constantly. In my, Matt, they're gonna find out anyway. <laughs> in my review of Free Fire, I described it as the MacGuffiniest MacGuffin to ever MacGuffin. Okay. Because it's like these two characters got in a bar fight the day before. Okay. And that's what causes this shootout to happen. Not even two main characters, two minor characters. What? So how 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 do we 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 don't get any time to to actually care about the characters and they just kind of show up get in a uh, bar fight and then they get in a shootout. That's a little bit of introduction of the characters. Okay. Then they get into a shootout and that's basically the movie. Basically, the only positive thing I can say about this movie is there's a lot of low angle shots of uh, Brie Larson. It's Brie Larson in that movie, right? I don't know who she is. <laughs> You know, Brie Larson. She was the love interest in 21 Jump Street. You, I haven't seen that movie. There's a lot of low-angle shots of Brie Larson. So, so that's nice. Okay. That's we're, the only uh, positive. We're, uh... So, apparently these reviews are just gonna be, like, every movie ever. Uh, <laughs> this man has seen every movie ever. Hasn't seen any movie ever. <laughs> Number 39, Split. Which I saw yep. with you. Yep, we saw that. We, uh, damn, that was... Five, uh, five out of ten. Only reason it gets a five out of ten is... Uh, James McAvoy's performance. Yeah, that was... He knocks it out of the park. Like, I'm recommending this movie just for his performance. Like, if you find this on, like, Netflix or at the Redbox, give it a watch just for his performance. It's so good. 
Everything else is an M. Night Shyamalan movie. Yeah. Um, like, painfully M. Night Shyamalan. The, the uh, protagonists in the story just aren't interesting. They say all the generic bullshit you can think of. They don't take a whole lot of initiative in their in their uh, in their uh, story. own story. They um, they're basically there so the so that John McAvoy can take over James the performance. McAvoy. John McAvoy. John Malkovich. <laughs> what did I say? You said John McAvoy. John Malkovich can uh, can take over the plot, and uh, yeah. <laughs> this was. Because there were a lot of movies that came out in 2017 that people, like, loved that I did not love nearly as much as everyone else. This was else. one of them. This was the first one. Yeah. Um, De- and definitely. I'm glad I saw it with you, because I probably wouldn't have... I probably would have been miserable at this by myself. Because, like, <laughs> that movie, like, the twist ending basically ruins it. Like, I can't see Unbreakable now, because that movie basically is like... All right... You should I, watch Unbreakable. It's a good movie. I'll, I'll watch it. Like an actually good movie. Although that was like a dumb thing to have. They just had Bruce Willis's character from Unbreakable show up, and like at that's like a eighteen year old movie. It would be a, a real twist at this point if <laughs> like uh, if uh, Shyamalan didn't have a twist. Like for once. For once, can we just get a normal movie from this guy? Like, he has spent so many years making bad movies that, like, he needs to start from the ground level and start building up again, alright? He kind of has. Because this at least had James McAvoy's performance, and, like, I didn't think The Visit was terrible. Um, Not that it was very good, either, but... Okay, he's not going to get a James McAvoy for every movie that he does. That's true. He's not going to get somebody who can do a performance like that so well. Um, it's it's. I think that most of this movie is up to the the lead antagonist to make it good, and then like Shyamalan did everything he could to you know put his <laughs> finger smudges all, all over. over it. It's just There's a like, scene where a character is like. Uh, are you going to get your hunter's permit when you turn 10 in three years? It's like, thanks for that awkward exposition. Sorry, uh, that was painful. That, that, that mo- that remembering that part of the movie. Because uh, there's like a sexual abuse uh, part of the movie. Yeah. That was so ham-fisted. And... Becomes an ex machina at the end. Oh yeah, that's right. I completely forgot about that. I I complete that was a bullshit plot. Yes, uh, that was a bullshit plot line there. Um, shall we move on to the next one? I would actually give it lower than a, than a uh, five out of ten. Five out of ten. I would I would probably give it like a four out of ten because uh, John Malkovich. James uh, McAvoy. I'm doing it to fuck with you. But uh, James uh, James Malkovich uh, is... Uh, he's so good in this movie, but, like, he doesn't get any help from any of the other characters. Like, the the only body... The only other person in that movie who's passable is the, the psychiatrist. And even she is, like, written poorly. There's not a whole lot that she can do to... So, yeah. I don't know who played her, but she she did all right. Yeah. She did what she could with the character, and then Shyamalan kind of... It's like, no, you gotta show less emotion. You gotta, you gotta be more stupid by saying stuff that's unscientifically backed up. <laughs> if you have... If you have multiple personalities, and one of your personalities has, like, some disease, but the others don't, you'll have that disease... When what? you're that personality. Oh yeah, that's right, she says that. Well, that's the setup for the ending, where he has the personality that believes that he's bulletproof. So he becomes bulletproof. That's how that works. So I just need to really think hard about being able to fly. Oh, that's what R. Kelly meant by I believe I can fly. 
Is that an R. Kelly song? Yeah. Huh. Anyways. Anyways. Moving on. A Cure for Wellness. Which I would give a 6 that, out of 10. That sounded... That looked like a pretty good movie. Not even gonna lie. That's because the trailer was good. It was a really good trailer. Okay. They managed to make uh, the Ramones' I Wanna Be Sedated sound scary. But... Here's the thing. Don't know where to go home. Here's the thing. This movie is... Um, it's like they wanted to make a David Lynch movie, but they didn't have the balls to make a David Lynch movie. <laughs> Alright. Because they're like, we want to have all this weird imagery. But what? we also want to have a plot that appeals to mainstream audiences. So you look oh. at the trailer, and it's like, oh, there's all this weird imagery. I wonder why that's in the movie. And it's just in the movie to look cool. Was it made by Tarson? Uh, no, it was made by Gore Verbinski. Oh, okay. Don't know who that is. He directed the f- first three Pirates movies. Okay. Uh, the, the good ones? The, the good movie. one? I'd say two. <laughs> The other, the other, the other two movies in the trilogy were like half good, so that makes another fully good movie. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I mean, it was okay because like I did kind of like some of the imagery and some of the performances. But pups, pups, like Stop it. something would happen, and then later you'd find out that that didn't actually happen. But it wouldn't be like a dream or anything. They'd just ignore that scene. It'd be like, why was that scene even in this movie? So it's sort of like a musical, except with weird scenes. Like they stop the entire story just to have a musical, like a music number. It's like, okay, we're just going to move on from here. It didn't happen. Yeah. Wow. All right. Fun. Yeah. you You know what that's called? A waste of time. Yeah. Moving on. Moving on. (laughs) Dunkirk. Six and a half out of ten. This movie was not good. Well, okay, it was... Okay. I heard it was pretty People fucking loved this movie. Yeah, I I heard it was, like, stupid good. Like, bravo to Christopher Nolan. He made the highest grossing uh, movie in 2017 that wasn't a remake, a sequel... Or a derivative work of any kind. Even though this was based on a true story, I think that this this doesn't. I think that this counts as like not being derivative. And I mean, it's one thing that it has like a high IMDb score, because IMDb users are on Christopher Nolan's dick like nothing else. Holy crap! All right, he made touched a nerve there, did we? (laughs) He okay. Look, I love Christopher Nolan's movies. Um. Except Dunkirk and Dark Knight Rises. Dark Knight Rises, I would say, is actually bad. <laughs> this is just... Okay. Like, slightly above average. Dark Knight Rises is actually bad, and it's on the IMDb Top 250. It's like, Jesus Christ, guys, chill. It was okay. It wasn't, it wasn't good, but... No, it was a very bad. disappointing ending to a really good series up to that point. Okay, but when you... Okay, we're not going to... Let's not go down this road. Meanwhile, all of Christopher Nolan's other movies, I love all of them. I haven't seen, like, every one. I think there's, like, two movies of his I Mm. haven't seen. But I've seen the big ones. You know, the Batman Begins, Dark Knight, Interstellar, uh, The Prestige, Inception, and Memento. Um, And Dunkirk, man, it was just really boring. Uh. It's like one of those movies... That, like, when you're in, like, middle school, and they take you to the History Museum. Oh. And then they're <laughs> they like, this movie hey, guys, you. let's go in the IMAX and watch this movie. And, like, Dunkirk could be the movie they put on. Oh, and you're yeah. like, oh, well, this is kind of interesting history lesson. It's nice that I get out of class for this, but I would never watch this on my own. Wow. That's actually pretty harsh. It's like, because I, I, I don't have fun memories it's, of those movies either. I mean, I guess it's a little better acted and a little better filmed. 
than those movies because this is like a mainstream Hollywood blockbuster uh-huh. from Christopher Nolan. So it is better than those movies, but like tonally and story wise, it's right in with those movies. Yeah. Damn. Anywho. Um, mm-hmm. Moving on? Moving on. Hitman's Bodyguard. <laughs> isn't that based? Isn't this the one based off of the video game? No. You're thinking of Hitman. Okay. I thought that this was based on Hitman. Um, Anywho, what is Hitman's Bodyguard about? It's uh, Ryan Reynolds and Sam Jackson. Okay. Damn, and all right. Sam Jackson is a Hitman who's going to testify against... Uh, Gary Oldman, who's playing this Russian dictator who's been overthrown, and he's going to testify against him in the UN. So they hire Ryan Reynolds to be his bodyguard. Okay. Um, to protect him, to get him to the court. Uh, but he and Ryan Reynolds have like a history together, and they like hate each other. Hmm. Okay. And my God, Ryan Reynolds and Sam Jackson. Pick up this movie and carry it like it is the dead body from Weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> like, they're the only right. thing making this film work. They are determined to make this film work, and it almost does. Really? Yeah. So where does it fall apart? Everyone except Sam Jackson and Ryan Reynolds. Fair enough. They have chemistry. They're good leads. Uh, but the script is just kind of... Immature, I guess I would say. Mm. And they can make it work. And I think a lot of their dialogue is improvised. Because it's better than a lot of the other dialogue in the movie. Uh-huh. But you get someone like Selma Halick coming in reading the script. And it's like... It just doesn't work. Okay. So was it like... The, it was um, just poorly written, I guess? Yeah. Uh, the action scenes are pretty good, though. Yeah. Although, in a few instances... It just, like, it, it, there's one scene where it's, like, Ryan Reynolds, like, at this food truck, and then, like, an action scene starts happening behind him, but he's clearly standing in front of a green screen. Like, hmm. it is so fake looking. Yeah. Anyways, not an altogether what, terrible movie. What would you give this movie? 6.5 out of 10. Alright. Like, so we're, we're, we're going up here. Yes. I didn't realize we were going up. I thought this was just in no particular order. I said we were going up. Well, uh... Uh... uh not my fault. <laughs> uh, Hitman's Bodyguard might be worth watching just for the leads. Okay. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it that highly. You ready for the next one? I'm fired up, man. Spider-Man Homecoming. Hey, all right. 6.5 out of 10. I got words for this one. Because <laughs> uh, this was a fun movie, if you don't think about it. <laughs> like, the more that you start to, like, really get into the movie, I, like, the second time around watching this movie, it's not as fun. But it definitely, the first time around, it had that Marvel charm, which was... Um, you know, it was probably to be expected. I would put this, like, in the middle of the Marvel movies. I enjoyed it. It was fun, I, but it was yeah. not a good Marvel movie. There's two things I think really push this film forward. The first is the sense of humor. It is a genuinely funny movie. Right. I got a lot of laughs out of it. The other is the Falcon. Falcon the Vulture. The Vulture. I meant the Vulture. Yeah, I... Okay, <laughs> I had that problem, too, because it totally looks like the Falcon design that they have. Uh, and and then it's like, and then it shows up and it's like, wait, so this isn't the... See, I'm just getting my birds mixed up. So I'm like, let's see, Marvel character that's a bird. Oh, the Falcon, no, wait, the Vulture. No, it's, they don't even call him the Vulture. They don't. They don't even mention him by name, which is why at the end of the movie I was like, so why did he have the falcon suit? Why is this bad falcon? I didn't know because they didn't tell me the name of the villain. Which I guess is fine. It's like, it's, it's not important. But outside of that, this is like the second best Marvel villain. 
Behind Loki. Obviously, Loki is still first. Nah, man. The 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 Mandarin. Top ten. Top ten. Marvel the Mandarin villains. wasn't even real. <laughs> No, um, yeah, no, I, I would say this is one of the best. Because, like, that scene in the car went, like, yeah. that was a good twist. Ah! Yeah. Because it changed the plot, it, it raised the stakes, and you found out at the same time that the characters found out. So you were having a very similar reaction in the theater that every, uh, everybody else in the story. Michael Keaton is great in this movie. Mm -hmm. uh, he really takes this role. The accents are kind of... His accent was, like, kind of funky. Eh, I don't know. I was fine with it. Um, and I just really like how this... how his story unfolds. Because, mm -hmm. like, Marvel... My dogs are fighting. Scout! Honey! Only one dog comes. It's like Marvel is scared to death to do a small story. They want everything to be huge and grand, and the earth is going to blow up if you don't do this. This was not and This was not that. No, this was a small story. This was really universe building. This is the this type of thing that would have happened if the Marvel Universe existed. Right. There would be these guys who would be stealing this alien technology and, and selling it. Just, I, I like the the fact that, you know, just because he's a bad guy does not mean he is bad guy. Um, he, he, he steals the stuff and it's like, it makes sense why he does it. And he get, he get, uh, he keeps getting pushed to further and further limits. The more that he goes, uh, to, uh, like, um, push the limits of what he does, it makes sense why he's doing it because he's already come this far. He has to. He ha he keeps pushing because he wants to make money for his family, or he wants to improve his business, or whatever. And he doesn't seem like he's a bad guy up until the very end, when they make like a joke about him accidentally killing a guy. Like straight up, he he just murders a guy and is like, "Oh man, I thought that this was the stun gun or something." And uh, he, I don't know. That was kind of dumb. But like. He's a he's a good villain. He's a, I I like Spider Man in this movie. Uh, Macaulay Culkin uh, was really good as uh, Spider Man, and uh, I what? I know you did it on purpose that time. <laughs> um, I liked him in Civil War, but when he he this I don't think he can carry this movie. No, he didn't carry the movie. I I definitely don't think that. Yeah. But like. I think the, the I mean it's a Spider-Man movie. Villains make or break the Spider-Man movies. That's right. why the first two Raimi movies are great, and yeah. Spider-Man three sucks, and Amazing Spider-Man two sucks mm -hmm. because the villains are terrible. There's like he has this love interest with this girl that was really just a waste of time. Because we all know he's going to hook up with, like, the Mary Jane character. Okay, but we don't find out that she's Mary Jane until the very end. Yeah, but it's pretty obvious from the beginning of the movie that they're going to hook up. And it doesn't help that the other... That the, the other... That the actual love interest is a, is a bit of a Mary Sue herself. Yeah, she's a bit of a Mary Sue, and then she just... Like, she, she's... I mean, she's she, a supporting she character, so it makes sense, but, like... She doesn't do a whole lot. She just sits there and looks pretty and doesn't put together the dots that Peter is Spider-Man. And that's about all she does. Like, what else does she do in the story? Nothing. She She's a, basically... for the Her for father the, is the Vulture. That's, that's her point. That is why she's in this movie. That's what she does in the... It, it's Which not, makes it really hard to get invested in their relationship. I mean, they're, they're you know cute it's together. not going anywhere. They're, they are cute together. I will they, give them that. They kind of have some chemistry. But, but like... I don't, you know I it's don't not see, going anywhere. I know Peter Parker and MJ aren't going anywhere because we don't know who her character is until the very end. What, what are you chewing on, Scout? <sighs> Probably some dog food. Okay. Um, the... Uh, 
sorry we're going off on this one, but this is one of the few movies I've actually seen. So like I can I can actually say <laughs> say something about it. Um, the last um, no not the, I like the the suit lady was funny, whatever they they wind up calling her, because like it it has. It's not like they haven't done this joke before. Like um, Iron Man had a very similar uh, character that was like part of the suit and AI and whatnot, and they did a lot of the same jokes before. But it felt like these were more well thought out. And um, I don't know. I like that part of the movie. Uh, moving on. Um, this was a fun movie. I think we might need to take a break because my battery's about to die. All right. So we'll split this into. Two, maybe three videos.